Hey, I'm Roman Alexander, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Love. I've been a fan of you since I heard Bad For Me and instantly I got hooked on your lyricism and definitely got hooked on your voice. So I'm glad that we can talk about your music and your artistry now. Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're a big fan. So uh, talk to me a little bit about just kind of uh, discovering that songwriting aspect that you have because the way you tell these stories is pretty is pretty unique and, you know, you really take me in and, and let me dive into that era or that time that you are kind of speaking about in your music. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a loaded question in, in a good way. I, I think that there's so many great things um, that Nashville has to offer. And one of that is the co-writing aspect of things. So a lot of the co-writers I work with um, are fantastic. I know Jerry Flowers and Jerry Kahn who produced the project with me. Um, they, when I went in that day, the day I wrote bad for me, uh, you know, for example, bad for me was the first day I ever actually got the right with Jerry. And, you know, I grew up listening to Jerry's music, the things that, you know, the projects he'd been a part of, Sam Hunt's Montevallo, you know, Keith Urban, Billy Currington, things I was really inspired by as an artist. Um, so getting right with him really was like that full circle moment. Um, so when we wrote, we just kind of talked about certain things. That's what we usually start. The first part of the write is always talking and just kind of, you know, uh, talking the wind and then just kind of catching up on life. And um, next thing you know, just one thing led to another and Jerry, uh, you know, had a melody and Jerry started playing guitar. And then the little, you're so good, you're so good, you're bad for me just kind of fell out. And then we started talking about that. Like, That's pretty cool. Let's talk about that. What could bad for me be? And it just kind of looped into the story. Some places I had been in my life currently in a relationship at the time. And, um, yeah. So it comes from real life experiences and some songs like girl trouble, for instance, is a, on the EP is, is an outside cut. So that was written by Trevor Rosen, uh, Josh Osborne, and Jesse Frazier. So three incredible writers. And it was, I'm very fortunate they let me re, um, you know, record it. But, um, you know, it, that's, uh, you get the healthy mix between outside cuts and, and the ones that you end up writing. With this EP in its entirety between you and me, like, I, I really love that it is a five song EP, but you're able to give us different chapters of what you kind of went through. I feel like that's something difficult to, to, to be able to complete in, in an EP. Usually people do that with an album. So how challenging was it for you to kind of figure out what kind of chapters, what kind of eras you wanted to talk about within these five songs? It took some time. It really did. I think when you sign, when I signed my publishing deal, the year before we even started recording, that year I spent writing and trying to hone in on what I needed to write about. Some of the experiences I didn't live till much later. You know, uh, Bad For Me was was something we wrote a little bit closer to the time we started cutting the, the music. So, um, you know, with Cocktail Conversations being the song that kind of was my introduction to the EP, like letting people know who I am, um, because all those are pretty real situations there. So, um they came through just experiences over that year while trying to get the EP together, knowing that the long-term shot was to put out a project like the EP between you and me. And you talked about having this um, like full circle moment with, with, with Jerry and Jared um, when you were working on this EP, like as far as, you know, aside from the writing process, how do you feel like they impacted the way that you consider your new material, the way that you consider your live show, the way that you consider just writing in general? Every day, those guys, like I'm going to see Jerry and Jerry tomorrow. I see them multiple times a week. I mean, those guys are, especially Jared. He was my first write when I got my publishing deal. It was like, I walked in the first day. He's from Missouri. I'm from Missouri. And then we just, we clicked. And I, I annoy him. Like I'm his little brother. Like I bother him probably, but he gets that. He understands me. And that's the beauty is having people that understand you. So they're challenging me constantly to, to write better music. I mean, Jared's the first guy that will tell me, man, I don't like that idea. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, you know, and, and it's hard to hear that sometimes, but knowing somebody that cares about you and your well-being as an artist and as a person, that's what you need to hear. You can't have yes men around you all the time. So Jerry came in and kind of reinforced that. And now Jerry's become a mentor. He's like a dad to me. And, and I really, you know, like a brother, you know, I see him as a family figure to me. He really has really taken me under his wing and, and guided me. And he's got such a love for young artists and taking care of them. So working with him, you know, he's like, hey, your live show, you need to do this. 
or here's what, what do you think? It's never like you should do this or you have to do this. So I was like, what do you think? Would you want to do this? And that right there leads for an open discussion and some room for growth. And, and those guys are just, I'm more than thankful. I think the EP really wouldn't be the EP without those guys. As far as like vocally goes, as far as like singing the tracks, the way that you did, how did you discover your sound, your own sound, your own style? Cause I feel like country music is so hard to, to have different kind of styles and without sacrificing uh, like the emotion that you're trying to emote out of your, your song. So what was that process like for you? It was challenging, you know, uh, I gotta say, yeah, it was more challenging than, than I thought it was going to be. You know, I, each song has different, you know, vocal ranges or, or different ways that, you know, that songs, parts of the songs that need more, you know, sultriness and, and more intimacy between you and these more of an intimate songs. So it really took me kind of taking a step back and, and kind of just falling into the song and letting the song kind of carry itself. It's a conversational song. So you kind of have to take that into consideration. Um, and like I said, having somebody like Jared, who is a fantastic vocalist himself, um, really helped me discover that sound. If he pushed me to my limits to see, you know, how high could I sing? And then also how low can I go? And, and you know, and then you kind of narrow in. But I think you find your true self and your true voice within the songs that you write. Um, so the songs that were the most me uh, that came out, I think ended up showing and showcasing my voice. Because I wrote a lot of songs and those five songs showcased my voice the best. Which song do you feel challenged you the most with, with this EP? You know, I have to say, that's a great question. I haven't been asked that. You would think I would have been asked that. But, um, <laughs> no, I, you know, that's between you and me. Now, as crazy as that sounds, because it's, it's a lower song um, in my lower, in a more of a lower register and more conversational. But when you're trying to play it live in general, it's just hard because you start off, you know, with the, can I tell you a secret? And it's just you and the guitar. And you're just really trying to not be overpowering you're not trying to start off too strong. You want to start nice and smooth and kind of work your way up from there. So that, that was, that posed a challenge bad for me. The chorus got a little, gets a little high in, in, in a good way. And, and um, that brought a lot of life to the song. So just trying to figure out what was comfortable, but not too much was, was the best part of that. Now you mentioned uh, you kind of had to discover or kind of figure out your ranges throughout this EP. Um, no matter how much you kind of change from one range to the next, it felt like it was just an easy transition for you. Was that something that came naturally to you during the recording process? Or was that something that you kind of had to practice over and over again in order to kind of nail it the way that you do on the CP? Well, so I had to practice the songs after I wrote them just to figure out what you know melody worked best for me or what range worked best for me. But when we got into the studio, we, we tested around with some different uh, vocal ranges, some different keys. Um, and I think those were the ones that felt the most natural to me. They came very natural once I got in there. Number one, because I knew the song really well, because I had sang it a million times just from writing it, singing the demo, and then, you know, playing it for my team a million times just to make sure that was the one we wanted. And then playing it out live a couple times, you know, in different arrangements, different ways. And then we finally went to go record it and that became natural arrangement it came really easy. It really did feel really natural. And I think that's what made me fall in love with the five songs is because they did come so natural. They didn't feel forced or inauthentic. When did you find the identity of each song? Was this during the writing process, during the recording process, like after you guys recorded the song, like when did that happen for you? It was a little bit of both. It was during the writing process and, and even some of the songs kind of found their identity. I mean, myself too, but found their identity when the fans started jumping on it was kind of mm. like they took on this own life they live this life after you release it and that is like the best sign in the world whenever you can see that a song starts to gain its own life that's bigger than yourself and you're like that's what i really wanted um but i found i found kind of the songs kind of found themselves and i found myself within that writing process just trying to figure out what i wanted to say and what was the best way to get my story across that was authentic and um you know was going to be able to tell people who i was in those three minutes. Now, lastly, this EP is out now, it's a new year. So I'm sure, you know, you have so many more plans for not just more music, but plans to kind of promote this EP, whether it's like live streams or, you know, hopefully some live shows later on in the year. But now that this is out and, and you know, you've had fans discover you and you've had fans that have been around 
you know, for some time, like just continue to fall in love with you. Like, what would you say to those new fans that who you are, who, who are you as an artist and what is this EP all about to you? You know, uh, this is going to sound really cheesy, but I'm a, I'm a little old fashioned, you know, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I, I love cocktails and cigars, but at the same time, I, I, uh, I get to kind of just show people, you know, where I'm from and, and who I am um, and the things I'm interested in. You know, I like, I like cocktails. I love beautiful girls. You know, there's that, there's that balance in between there. So um, yeah, that's who I am is, is, is also going to be a really well portrayed in my live show when we can finally get out to start playing shows. That'll be a, that'll be an exciting moment. I know we're in a weird time right now, but it's uh it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good year ahead. Right. Right. Well, congratulations with between you and me. I'm, I'm glad to have uh, been introduced to your music and definitely look forward to more music from you uh, in the near future, man. So thank you again for taking the time. No, dude, I, I really appreciate it even more. And uh, thanks for having me on. We should stay in contact more often on uh, Instagram. Absolutely, absolutely.